Welcome. In this video, we're delving into the world of op amp based low pass filters. The circuit we're dealing with employs a generic op amp model with a rail to rail power supply, and it's designed to have a total cutoff frequency of 1 kHz and a gain of 1. I'll show you how to modify this circuit so that it's ready for simulation. Okay, first let's add spice enabled power sources on the right and on the left of the circuit, including two DC voltage sources for dual rail power supply. The trick to the dual rail power supply is to put your positive power supply above ground and your negative below ground. So here I placed the ground on the right side between those two power supplies. And then I'll connect the sinusoidal voltage source to the beginning of the circuit on the left here. Now for the voltage sources, they're going to be at three volts each. And this gives the top source positive three volts and the bottom source negative three volts um, because it's placed below the ground. For the left voltage source, it will be sinusoidal at one kilohertz. Through our simulation software, we'll vary the input voltage frequencies from 10 hertz to five kilohertz. But before we do that, let's add a spice model to this op amp. So to do that, you would double click on your operational amplifier and notice that it has no models attached to it. So we're going to go and click add simulation. And this is where you can add spice models. So if you have a local model in your files, you can choose local browse for one and then navigate to your design folder. And here I've downloaded the spice library file. And then I can search for my model within this file. Okay, click OK, match the pins in the design file with the pins of the schematic symbol. Sometimes the pin names do not match, so you have to make sure they work electrically. This part has two parts in it. Um, and what's cool is that you can assign the same spice model pins to uh, schematic pins that have different names, but it's the same function. And if you want, you can exclude a part of a package from simulation. I'll click OK and this symbol is ready for simulation. Okay, so with simulation model in place, let's run the simulation. So go to simulate simulation dashboard and I will start verification. Now it looks like I have duplicate designators here. So I'm going to annotate my schematic. That solves that problem. Then for the simulation models, we can assign them automatically. Okay, looks like the spice model for the op amp is good. That's where I would do my AC sweep. So we're gonna do 10 Hertz to five kilohertz at 100 points per decade. Okay, so now I'll add some output expressions for this circuit. I'll click add and I want my V out, but in the db or decibel magnitudes okay and i'll go in my complex functions set that magnitude out for my output voltage choose something that's easy to see and create that and then for my output phase i can just change this to phase Select my node voltage, place this on its own axis, and choose a color that's also easy to see. Then I can hit run, and it generates my results. Now that the filter works, the next goal is to identify which components have the most effect on the cutoff frequency. So let's set up a sensitivity analysis to determine the most influential device on the cutoff frequency. 
So to do this, I would go into my settings and then go into my sensitivity tab. Now here I can set any of my resistors to be varying by a 10% tolerance plus or minus and likewise for my capacitors in my design. Okay. And so using this, I would click OK, run the simulation, and then see how the sweep varies, how that cutoff frequency changes with those varying component values. But let's go back into the sensitivity settings. And instead, I want to focus on varying my tolerances by 10% for some of my components and only 1% for a few of my other components. The benefit to this approach is you get to control exactly which devices are going to skew the signal and the performance, um, how many of the devices you want to have a major effect on the circuit versus a small effect on the circuit. Okay. And also, I can't just include only the components that I want to change their values for. I have to include other components because they are going to vary their values anyway. So this is why I redo all of the components, but vary them by different amounts. So now we go and rerun the simulation and then see from further analysis, which of our 1% tolerance capacitors and resistors affect the circuit the most when other devices are at 10% variance and so on. So these are techniques that you can use to make better decisions. And you now know how to do AC simulation, AC sweep and sensitivity analysis on your circuit. Thanks for watching.